Yeah, my naga. The Butte County is uh, underneath Lake Orville. A lot of your Naga cities is underneath lakes and reservoirs, man-made lakes, reservoir built by these damn dams. I don't know why my Naga man. I, I got I got Shiloh on my mind, man. I got Shiloh on my mind. <laughs> you ever wake up with Shiloh on your mind, man? It's about five in the morning, tip top, top of the soul, out here in L.A. You know what I mean? Inglewood. Hey man, hey rise and shine, my naga. <laughs> I got these lakes on my mind, bone. Cause I know now, we know now, underneath this water is Naga Cities. Naga City on Naga City on Naga City. <sighs> yeah, I man, you got these towns flooded in 1963. After the creation of the Trinity Dam, Trinity Center, Menserville, Strings Town, all this stuff they're calling. They don't know the names of this stuff. This is Indian land, right? What would they know about it? This America, right? Copper color race is found here, right? So whatever's underneath here, it belongs to you. Don't let these people think, make you think that because they moved in in the 1800s and 1900s. Oh, well, our little city's buried under there. You built your city on top of our shit. It's Trinity Center. You built your stuff on top of our stuff, man. If your stuff's under here, that means our stuff's under here. That's why we're involved. That's why we're concerned. Look at this, man. Beautiful lake. <laughs> oh, man. Located in Yuba City, this mining town. They always call them mining towns so you don't know the Naga towns. What are they mining for? The Naga's things. The Naga stuff. Oh, man. Dodging all hijacks today, man. I don't know why I'm up popping off, man. I guess because I'm making Naga moves, you know. I'm up making Naga moves, my Naga. And I know you making Naga moves, too. I know we are making Naga moves moves together allow why levy ball pluto nash the anonymous family stephen mosley oh the family's you know showing up my naga and you see it happening man right in your face bone right in real time the nagas want a fence the nagas want a fence blue purple red white linen gold thread the nagas want a fence okay so the Nagas really want a fence then? Nagas, you really want a fence on your own acre of land? Something we can add to and continue to add to? Might be an acre a day. Might be 30 acres tomorrow. Might be 300 acres next week. We don't know, right? Because we never seen what 500 cold keeping families can do. I mean, my call out to 500 cold keeping Nagas, hey, this is for the droplets, you know. We're talking about the families. Can you imagine 500 families of cold keepers building together? Only united, only thing uniting us, only thing united these families is the code of Hawaii. Not to kill each other and steal from each other and no power before Hawa. Our breath and security. Mama, daddy, frame of shaper, Abba, Ama, Ama, Abba. That's what binds us. That's what flows through us. That's why we popping off. 8,408, man. Every cent count to get to our 10,000 goal. And that's going to get us started to fortify our wall of protection. A fence that becomes a wall on an acre of land is a big project. The materials are skyrocketed because they don't want Nagas to build. So we're going to need every cent to build our blue, purple, red wall of protection. We need our wall of protection. 
<laughs> they talking zombie apocalypse. I need my 500 cold keepers. Hey. I need my 500 cold keepers to believe in yourself more than these zombies, man. You know, it's the time for us to step up and we're doing it in real time. And they all watching, but we ain't paying attention to them because we too building, we too busy building my Naga, making Naga moves for Joy World. Everyone that's put in on this, all my Nagas that, that have donated a high peculiar joy. You know what I'm saying? Seeing where your donation's going to. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's happening. The anonymous family's showing up. We we said it from the top. $20 a piece, $10 a piece. I mean, 500 cold keepers, that's 5,000, 10,000 right there. All we need is 500 cold keeping families. Cachelli Holmes, Wes Crockett, Oseline Perry. Let's go. Contessa Taylor, Eric Mays, Naomi Alexander, Ashira Israel. <sighs> Family's everywhere, man. The family is everywhere, man. Maurice Rudley, Robert Salazar, that's everywhere. We're everywhere. Copper Color 144, Kylie Harp, Harper, man. I, I love y'all. AI, man. Y'all want a fence? Well, that's the destination. We already bought the land. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We didn't ask for you to chip in on that. We reached in our pockets and we bought the land. We got the land. We need to build the land. We need the fence first. We need a wall of protection. Get the water to the 500 cold keepers. Holding us up. So we spiraling up, my nigga. This is where we are. This is what we do because it's been done before. But now it's underneath these reservoirs. What we're doing is nothing new. We popping off just like we used to for joy world man but nah not again my naga cause we in cold we, we, ain't, <laughs> we ain't suffering this fate no more cause we are in cold what was this oh Yuba City Yuba County <laughs> now it's part of the new Bullards Bar Reservoir in the 1970s man Naga City, or Naga City, or Naga City. Entire city's gone. They just moved into them. These damn dams, right? Shasta Dam. Look, man, Copper City is buried, right? Of course, the Alabama, you got the Pickwick Dam, all the other dams with the whole land of Benson under underwater. You got Forsyth, we talked about that. The Gold Rush in Colorado, you're going to connect this Gold Rush, the cities of gold, the cities of gold, because they're looking for the cities of gold. That's why we're recounting the Coronado Expeditions. Punk ass Esteban, right? Yeah, man. All this is covering up Negro cities. I don't know how else to tell, tell y'all, you know. Black people, think you're black. Your cities, your things are underwater. Not because of nature, because they build dams, man. Damn, man. How many times they flushed us out? Seville, damn. How many times they flushed us out, man? We are underwater. We. <laughs> we. Because make no mistake about it. Manak. We talking sunken black history, right? <laughs> we are underwater. Because once you connect this, you connect it all. Yeah, it's deeper than the Tulsa Massacre in 1921, although that's extremely deep. The entire town of Oscarville, this predominantly Negro Naga community, is under Lake Lanier. Start connecting the lakes. Managa, 
I woke up with Shiloh on my mind. Shout out to my aqua. I mean, I can't remember what your name is, but you dropped it in the comments and it just stayed on my mind. And for some reason, four, five in the morning, top of the soul in Los Angeles, you know, <laughs> Shiloh was on my mind. I was like, I start reconning it. You're going to see how this connects, man. Just watch this. Maybe we're going to do this real quick. I know we all got a lot of stuff going on, so we're just going to hit this one right in the gut bone. Let's go, man. Lake Lanier used to be a Naga town. <laughs> all this is towns, most multiple towns, many cities, towns, like Grand Canyon, like towns, you know, black towns, right? <sighs> Alabama, Benson. We got that whole story last time. Get the drop. Let's go back. Get the last couple of drops on the ghost cities. You know what I'm saying? Martin Dam was put up. This Naga community gone. Now they're moving in in the 1800s doing this. They're not really doing this to themselves, even though they'll say that they're victims too, right? What what is in those cities that they took over? These mining towns must have been worth burying. You know what I'm saying? They lived there. They they moved in on us, but they couldn't even stay there. Like even they was like, "No, nah, we gotta go. We gotta bury this shit." Because if it wasn't for that, they would have let them, you know, rock. They wouldn't build a dam on their own people. They don't do this to their own people, unless there's something to hide. Unless there's something to hide. Kawalaja, Alabama, another thrive, another one. Henry Mc McKee Islands, another one. All these are Naga cities, verified, man. Verified. And, of course, you got Central Park, New York, these reservoirs. You're talking about York Hill. You're talking about Seneca Village, man. Rest in power. Man, this ain't no play play. An entire Manhattan Village owned by black people was destroyed to build Central Park. Rest of power, my knockers, man. That's uh, Albro Lyons and Mary Joseph Lyons, residents of Seneca Village, man. Underwater. All right. There's the blueprint. I mean, the list goes on and on. And when we start looking into it, you start looking into your cities around you, you're going to just <laughs> discover some things, right? Because the list literally goes on and on. I mean, Oscarville is mind-blowing. Lake Lanier, you got the Benson Flow, Kalaja. Of course, the list goes on and on. And we was talking about the Cibola drop. I mean, whoa, because we'd be talking about Cibola. We're talking Kalalus, we're talking Cibola. Okay, okay. So like I said, man, I woke up with uh, Shiloh on my mind. And then I started looking into these lakes drying up. Uh, I think this is on Lake Mead. You know, I mean, Lake Mead is drying up, right? You know, <laughs> all these lakes, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, start looking into the stuff, you know I mean? You you go recon it, but these lakes are drying up. That's all we need to know. <laughs> all right, so let's see. Let's go to Shiloh. Sholo, oh, excuse me. Sholo, my naga. Wink, wink. What is Shiloh? I mean, just for the record. <clears throat> what is Shiloh? You know, we hear about it connected with the Bible. You know. What is Shiloh, man? Who knows, man? Who knows, man? All right. Biblical city. Uh, let's check this out. Shiloh. All right. Was an ancient city in Samaria. <sighs> Mentioned in the Hebrew Bible has been positively identified with modern Kerbet, Silium, Atel, or archaeological mound called in modern Hebrew Tel Shiloh. Archaeological mound. I mean, where's the city of the mound builders, man? Sounds a lot like America to me. You know? 
Samaria, <laughs> at any time is a good time, if you could say it with me. Hyborian. Hey, hop to the balcony, surfers, man. You've been surfing the web off the balcony. Can't you tell we popping off, my nigga? We still here? We still here popping off? You kidding me, man? Hey, allow why? It must mean that water continues. Shiloh. What they say, ancient kingdom connected with Samaria, man. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is a reality simulation. I know it's a war. It's a gamer war map. <clears throat> it is a reality simulation made in Arizona, and we are talking Shiloh, Arizona. So I said, how, how convenient. Cause I love this war map. I mean, you even <clears throat> you even have the Thothamon spell barrier. You, you got Zimbabwe right on top of South America, and look how major South America is. That would be Africa here. When it's all connected like Pangea. But most of the stuff you think is in the Middle East is right here according to this reality simulation of what things at one time, used to look like. Yeah, so Zimbabwe connects to South America. Punt. Shouldn't that be in Africa? Why is it connected to South America, man? Shouldn't it be over here? But over here, they just got Vindia, like India, but with a V, Vindia. And nothing that you would think would be in Africa. <laughs> but all the stuff's over here, right? Like Egypt, like like uh, Luxor, Kim, yeah. Right, Egypt, right? The Haunted Pyramid, Sukhmet. Egypt, right? You got Darfur, you got the land of Kush, like the capital of the Kush, Moreau, right here on top of South America over the Black Kingdoms, like Peru, Amazonia. It's a reality simulation. I love this map. I mean, Zimbabwe. You even got Iranistan or Persia. Okay. <laughs> so where's the real Persia? Where is the real Iranistan? Why is it all connected to South America like this? And what does it all have to, you know, do with? You over here in North America or India Superior, Grand Tartaria, now that we see clearly. Because over Egypt, you have the land of Shem, S-H-E-M, Shem. Got you. Okay. Got the Cushes, Cushes Sea. Remember Moses in the book of Jasher, the king of Cush for 40 years? Right. Moses, like, uh... Moshe, like Mexica, like Mexico, that would be right over here too, right? Mexico, yeah. <sighs> Moses, King of Kush, you got Timbuktu or Timbuktu, Shem, the land of Ophir, Ophir. Like Christ of Ophir, Christopher. <laughs> Looking for Ophir. You got Corinthia. You got Nemedia. Neb Aquilonia. Something like that. But then over here you got Zingara. And pretty much where the West Coast or Cali would be. Would be this picked land, which we got to get into the pig series, because this is divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tribes of pigs in the land of Khalifa. And over here would be like the Utah Four Corners area. We're just talking Arizona. I mean, we're talking uh, Shiloh. <laughs> and Shiloh, they said, what about Shiloh? Shiloh, Shiloh, ancient city in Samaria. 
Now I can't make this stuff up, my nigga. I'm just looking at a gamer map of, you know, what would be the North America or India Superior, right? I'm zooming in on where the four corners would be. Con Con. Right there. You see Pick Land. Got you. Twelve tribes. Bang. Or you see it right here, very faintly in white. Samaria. You got the Sumerian heartland. <laughs> you got the northern southern clans and the eastern western clans. And if you keep going up, you got the Asgard and Hyperborea, right? It's very similar to what we had on the moon map. We got a Hyperborea too, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> So why do we got Sumerian? Spelled with a C right here. Like here, Sumerian. Sumeria. Sumeria. Right where the four corners would be. Pretty much right where Arizona would be. <laughs> Straight up like that. And Sumeria. Within Sumeria is Shiloh. So you're telling me within Samaria, where pretty much Arizona would be on this reality simulation, right? In Arizona, they're making this. In Arizona, my nigga, all right? <laughs> okay, I can't make this shit up. In Arizona, where Arizona would be, there's Samaria. Okay. In Samaria, there's the ancient city of Shiloh. Come. In Arizona, where Samaria is here. <laughs> in Samaria is Shiloh. And you're telling me there's a show low Arizona? My naga? <laughs> and they made this whole thing about how it got its name by the turn of a car, like some card game. Somebody had a card game. They said, uh, show low it is. Some <laughs> Cooley turned up his deuce of clubs. Show low it is. As a tribute to the legend, show low's main street named deuce of club. So this whole thing is named after a card game. Do you believe that? Or does Sholo have anything to do with Shiloh? I said, does Sholo have anything to do with Shiloh? I said, does Sholo have anything to do with Shiloh? And don't the Mormons be covering all that stuff up over there, right? And knowing that this town was settled by the Mormons and knowing that the Mormons know what they know about America <laughs> as the promised land, would it have anything to do with the biblical ancient city of Shiloh and Sholo, where the Mormons specifically went to settle? Khan, did the Mormons cover anything up? Did they make any reservoirs or lakes to cover any Negro Naga cities, my Naga? More sunken black history? I'm just asking questions at this point because we... We shouldn't even be over here, right? We should not be talking Sholo, Shiloh, lakes, dams, Negro City, sunken black history. We shouldn't even connect all that, right? We should not connect it. But mama is the ingredients to connect us with these damn dams. Sunken black history. Shiloh, ancient city in Samaria. That's all I need to know. Because for some reason, Samaria is here. Why would this reality simulation do this? Why? Why put Samaria right where Arizona would be? <laughs> and why is there a Shiloh, Sholo, Arizona? In Navajo country, my naga. So they're trying to make this about a card game. As if they invented the town of Shiloh, Sholo. When if it's a Navajo country, it's Indian land, huh? 
in Indian land, it's going to have its own name, right? They just either renamed it to Sholo <laughs> or they're covering up the biblical Shiloh. And is it possible that this biblical city is hidden beneath the waters like in the rest of the sunken Naga history? The last place you would look for your city is uh, up under that water. That's cursed. The mama told you not to swim in it, right? Because of the curse of the death. So we're taught to stay away from it. We are specifically taught to stay away from it. Oh, you better not go near that water, boy. That's cursed. It's a ghost lake. Ghost cities. Ghost cities and the ghost lake. Scary. Your things are buried there. Oscarville is buried there. Benson is buried there. Kawalaja, York Hill, Seneca Village, Cibola, Bear, Shiloh, buried in Sholo. Is Shiloh buried in Sholo is all I'm asking. Shout out to my Naga that dropped this. I think that's all my Naga, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> was uh, pointing at as well. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could find that comment. I just remember Sholo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Sholo, right? It's all about a card game. If you can show low, you win. Show low. Leaning back with my Sholos. <laughs> I'm not for real, for real. It's Shiloh, Arizona, the biblical city, the ancient city, in Samaria, in Samaria, Samarian heartland. Bang, 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 bang. Wow. Wow. Just connecting a couple of things. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. <laughs> Do not mind the Naga at all. Nagaville. Shout out to Dragon Child. Shout out to Dragon Child. Shout out to Dragon Child. All right. So. In these ancient maps, like the one I got zoomed in here, Managa, there is no Arizona. Ping, pow, ping. It's all Judah, babe. And if it's all Judah, <laughs> if it's all Judah, you're talking biblical cities. You're talking Judea, right? You're talking all that, right? Samaria, all that, the Hebrews, right? According to the Bible, Shiloh was the major Israelite worship center before the first temple was built in Jerusalem. The priest of Shiloh, they said, uh, Claiming descendants, according to Richard Elliot Friedman, the priest of Shiloh, was the e source of the documentary hypothesis and also provided much of the materials of Deuteronomistic history and the writer of the history, Jeremiah, or somebody close connected to him being a descendant of these priests. If correct, this would make Shiloh a major source of history, part of the Old Testament. The same Shiloh that's in Samaria? The same Samaria that's in uh, Utah. Because, you know, according to uh, this map here, all this is Utah. You see California at the coast? The coast, California, right? 
So whether you're talking all this, see this big circle I'm making? All this is Judah, baby. All this is Judah, baby. All this is Judah. All this is Judah. I can't make this up, man. Why the Mormons come here again? They thought Kitsukoda was Jesus. They knew Kitsukoda was the priest king, man. Kitsukoda, we're talking Joshua, Hawashua, under Moshe. We are talking Moshe, huh? Shiloh, descendant of the priest of Moshe, huh? Right? Priesthood of Shiloh claiming descendancy from Moshe, huh? Then you got Joshua, huh? The Mormons believe Kitsukoto to be that Joshua, but they put it into their New Test as JC, right? The other Joshua, Yeshua over there, not the real freedom fighter, giant slayer, uh, water parting Joshua that parted the water for you to cross on dry ground. Made the sun stand still. That Joshua, you know, the, the real Magi under Moshe, Deuteronomy 34, Moshe lays his hands on him, passes his energy to him. Moshe, whose, you know, life was never abated, whose eyes were never dim. That Moshe, that Joshua, the Mormons know. They move right in where? Utah, right? Why? Oh, you got Zion, right? Zion National Park. You got you got the Tabernacle Dome. Where's the Tabernacle, bro? The Tabernacle Dome in Zion Park near Angel Falls. It's all making sense. They protecting everything around here, right? From Salt Lake all the way, you know, in the places in between. But now you're connecting Shiloh too. Right? They got the land of Ephraim, they got the land of Enoch, they got all this stuff. Oh, they just named they just named it that stuff. Or did they move in to Judea? Utah. Utah. Why? U T A H. Have you looked at the etymology play et etymology page lately, my my naga? Okay, I'm too I'm too popped off to even spell right now. Told y'all, man, I'm making Naga moves. For real, for real. Let's go. Cause y'all making me pop off. Cause you making Naga moves. Have you looked up the etymology of uh Utah? Utah, U.S. Territory, organized 1850. Organized in 1850. That should give something away. Who's organizing it in 1850, man? <laughs> the Coons say still scrapping, right? I mean, you know, those wars are continuing. Who's organizing Utah? What U.S. Territory? These are the Indian Wars, right? <laughs> All right, the Chickamauga Wars are continuing. Now, Utah, they're getting it from the Spanish Y-U-T-A. Uh-oh. Name of the indigenous Ute Aztec people of the Great Basin, perhaps from Western Apache. You're about to get on how these Apaches was rolling up on all these hijacks <laughs> because they're connecting with this Ute or Udall or what? You doll, come on, man. Do I have how they spell it? Y U D A H. I'm just gonna do this. Watch this. Watch this. This ain't no studio trick. Watch this. Watch this. My name. Tribe of Y U D A H. You doll. Where's it take you? Right. I didn't do no studio tricks, right? Now you can connect 
you know, Copper Color Race is found here. Great, you know, work from James Adair and, you know, everyone letting you know about your Hebrew customs that were already here. The Calais Loose artifacts, all the Hebrew artifacts coming out of Calais Loose in Arizona. Swords with Hebrew and dragons on them, too. Bodies on bodies. They date back to 200 AD that no Indian tribe today is claiming because these are too OG for them, just like the mounds. Right here in Utah or Arizona or Utah, because there ain't no Arizona. How they spell it? <laughs> now they go into the biblical history. All we did was put Y U D A H, con con. No matter how I do it, it's just going to take you to the tribes of Judah. So don't play with me when you see Y-U-D-A-H right here. I didn't I didn't spell it no differently, my noggin, to get to the priesthood. They say it means high. That's just, they're not going to connect you to the tribes of Judah or Utah, right? They're just going to say high. Really? Like you'll be the head, not the tail high? Like, I'll place you high above all the other nations type of high. Like, kum, kum, nagazon, kwam, high. Udall is Judah. There ain't no difference. There ain't no difference. There ain't no difference. And they smart enough to put the nagas in the picture, right? That's good. That's good. That's a great picture. Great picture. Because these Nagas right here. <laughs> are from the land right here. This high lofty land. These Nagas that think they from Africa. That are claiming to be the tribe of Judah. Are from Utah. Scattered from where? Here. Coronado. Expeditions. Esteban. They're coming to find you. They're coming to find you. They're coming after you in early 1500s. You don't. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. It's too, it's too easy. We're talking about Shiloh. Shiloh and Samaria, Samaria, Samarian heartlands. We're talking Utah, Utah. Why is there Samaria? According to the Arizona reality simulations, why is there a, hey, call and ask them. They've got a number, you know, call and ask them. <laughs> why is there a Samaria where Utah would be? I mean, you know, you see it small right here, but, you know, Utah, they put Arizona at the bottom now, right? But all that is just Utah. You see how they got New Mexico back in the day. New Mexico is this little piece at the bottom connected with Mexico, <laughs> which makes a lot of sense. I mean, so you see how things got shuffled around. They fit Arizona in right there now. But where's Samaria? Right there. And they're telling us Shiloh was an ancient city in Samaria. Okay. Let's go. So, yeah, naturally, I started digging on, you know, a little short dig on some Shiloh history. They're going to give you some real recent stuff, right? I'm asking for history. Okay, I went to Shiloh, uh, az.gov, right? Looking for history. 1932, you got a public library, yada, yada. More stuff about the library. Uh, they completed a major landscaping project. They're not telling you which one. 
we're going to look into what possibly was that one. Uh, first street signs and little stuff. But they're not really giving, you know, history, right? <clears throat> like, what, what, what's really popping? This thing, this is the history section. You get recent stuff from 1932. That's when I said maybe they're hiding something. Why would they just give us history from 1932 if I'm asking for Shiloh history at ShilohAZ.gov? You got the this the Chamber of Commerce. You got the city, yada, yada. You can't get no better history than this. You must be hiding something. So, you know, I dug a little deeper, you know, <laughs> put some stuff in, you know, look for some things. <laughs> History of Shil of Sholo. Townsquarepublications.com. They got a little more history here. They, they give you the card game stuff. If you want to, you know, see what they say on the table about the card game. Whatever. I just want to get the drop. Now, this picked up in 1200. Now, that's Preston John territory, right? That's Genghis Khan invading America at 1202. Genghis Khan invaded King David in 1202. That's that Preston that's that Preston story, right? But put that to the side. Let's go. In 1200, a tribal village was established in the area of present-day Sholo, but was later abandoned for unknown reasons. Did I just say Genghis Khan invaded <laughs> King David, Preston John? Right here at that same spot. Right here at that same spot, that same Shiloh, man. Right? No, no, I can't, I can't make this stuff up. Map from the British Museum, the MS map, Marco Polo's Asia and the New Land, circa 1530. Let's go deeper, right? South America, North America, but you don't see no North America. This is India Superior. There's no North America. You're really in the Superior India. And who's over here holding down Shiloh? <laughs> who's over here holding down Samaria? Who's over there holding down Utah or Judah? None other than King David himself, who holds the scepter of Judah forever. Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 37. Jeremiah 30, Hosea 3, and on and on we go. David is king forever. David got the scepter. The scepter, scepter would never depart from Judah. That's in Genesis. Con. So, all right. Prester John, Prester John, Prester John, who is a known so-called uh, black man, uh, a black king, right? A Negro, a Naga, a Kapakala Khan, the Amaru Khan. Right where the Grand Kanye would also be in Arizona. Another Naga city, another Naga, <laughs> multiple cities, right? Just like we got with Lake Lanier and all these other stuff. But the Grand Kanye is huge, man. I mean, huge. This is, look, man, 1200, they're picking up. A tribal village was established, but disappeared or was abandoned for unknown reasons. Then we just talk about Coronado expeditions. That's the Bonico. Look how this falls together. Three centuries later, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado left his footprints in the area searching for the... I'm out of here, baby. I'm out of here. Y'all be good, man. I told you drop is popping off because you popping off because we making Naga Vu. Naga moves. <laughs> we got that Naga Vu. <laughs> hey, shout out to my Naga. Uh, yo, Seth popping that mem sauce off, man. If you if you ain't got your mem sauce yet and you need that copper, that zinc, you know what I'm saying? This is before we even pop everything else off, man. The bro's coming right up the gut bone with the elixir, man. The elixir, man. If you want to get in contact with the bro, yo, Seth, for the mem sauce, just holla at me. I'll link you directly, man. You know, you know, I don't know if he's taking orders, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, if 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 you ride on time, you ride on time. You know what I'm saying? But I'll make sure I link you with the bro. Hit me up. Music at 432thedrop.com. Music at 432thedrop.com. Also hit me up for your Naga Scepters with the Aqua Kokma Shaloma Lego. Seven 
cities of gold. And AI to all my Nagas supporting my Naga CJ Battle and Aqua Sam. If you want to, you know, get linked in and help them as they transition with their beautiful new bod, brand new baby girl. You know, if you want to help them, hit me up. I'll link you to them, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be the plug for all my Nagas, man, to make sure the water's flowing and make sure everyone's supported. And definitely support Joy World. A hop to you. Seven cities of gold. <laughs> what? How do we get here, my nigga? Come on, we just looking up Sholo. How did we get here? What 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 part are we on on the cities of gold? How long have we been digging on cities of gold and Esteban, Black Steve, and all that stuff? More and more war. Right back to the more and more war, longitude and latitude on the Naga's head bomb. We're just talking. Uh, India Superior, Preston John with the Father Youth, King David, King Solomon, Solomon's Gold, Montezuma's Gold, Mansa Musa, who's supposed to be in Timbuktu, and Timbuktu is right near you. I'm just talking Timbuktu, right, over Peru, Black Kingdoms, bang, bang, bing, pow, right, but don't go too far. Into the land of no return. Definitely don't cross that Thothamon spell barrier. What is that about? <laughs> and is it still there? Hi, Boreal. Yeah. We're just talking Sholo. <laughs> We're just talking Shallow. Damn, ain't that some hey, hijack, man? Let me tell you. Watch this. Watch this dismount, though. Sholo. <laughs> Shallow. Sholo in Samaria. Samaria in Utah. Prester in Utah. King David, tribe of Judah, Utah, Utah. Spanish spelled it Y U T A. From the Apache, Utah. Hi. Is you high? Is you on coom? I feel pretty much on coom in Utah, my nigga. Because you know well, who else is over here, right? And why'd the Mormons come anyway? Why'd the Mormons come anyway? To Sholo. Yeah, man. Yeah, because they're not going to look, man. I, they're not, they gave me demographics today and transportation, some education, notable people. Wikipedia ain't giving me no history. So let's go. Uh, show low AZ they didn't give me no history, so I said something's, you know, something's afoot over here. Let's go. Now we find out that in 1200 there's a tribe, an entire village or city that was suddenly abandoned, right? Just like this type of ancient city, right? Okay. Now it's abandoned. Here comes Coronado three centuries later in the 1500s with Esteban, the black man, leading the way, right? They're looking for seven cities of gold, right? We just talked about gold rushes and all that other stuff when it comes to those other uh, cities that are buried beneath the water, right? I mean, Managa, you know, gold rush all day, right? They're just looking for things. They're burying stuff. They're burying stuff. They're looking for stuff, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're building damn dams. And they're talking about a gold rush, right? Colorado. Colorado. All this is Udall. Judah, my not, right? So <laughs> the press is over here, right? We're talking India Superior. They're looking for the gold rush in Colorado. <laughs> Shout out to the Templar. Okay. They're looking for the gold rush. And you got this jabroni Coronado looking for the gold, right? Now, he was following another three centuries. He was following another three centuries later by Mountain Men, Ewing, Young, and Kit Hartson. And they led a trapping party down the Salt River Canyon. 1829. So hijack after hijack is now coming into Udall, huh? land of the Preston, huh? India Superior, not North America, Mexico, 
Right. We got Mexico. We got the Preston. Let's go. Now you got the more hijacks in the 1800s. That's when they picked the story up, right? 1800s. Sholo's founder, Cordin Cooley, left Virginia at age 20 to come to New Mexico, right? Where the Esteban get killed. New Mexico. Hawaku. Let's go. After serving in the Union Army as a scout and interpreter for General George Crook, Cooley married into the white. <laughs> so he married in in the 1800s into the white. <laughs> the, the white Apaches, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> into the hijacks, you know. And now he's a part of them. Now he's now he's one of us, right? So cool, cool, cool. Cool. Cool for the cooler. All right, moved his family around, yada yada yada. He acquired this ranch called his Sholo. Now here's where the Mormons come in. Hired Mormon settlers David Adams and Alfred Clough to work the ranch. Why the Mormons got to come into this, right? Like, enter the Mormons into this, right? In the 1800s. I mean, it was already being hijacked. Something happened in the 1200s that made the whole place get abandoned, right? It was already a more and more war popping off. Con, we're just talking about an ancient city. Ancient city of Shiloh. Right? Shiloh, abandoned in 1200. Coronado come looking for the gold. Then later some other jabronis, 1800s, you know. He marries into the white tribe. <laughs> All right. Tribal center located in White River, old Fort Apache, approximately 40 miles from present-day Shiloh. But what's the old school Shiloh? What's the old school Shiloh? And here come the Mormons. Settlers, right? So we're gonna pick up more on this Mormon tribe, but this is what's happening, you know what I mean? This is what's happening. We're getting little bits of history, little bits. Man, I'll leave this for you, you know, for all you know, all the noggers that wanna see what they're talking about, the card game. Cause you know, hey, why not? You know, why not? There are some things that Come on, are man. Come on, man, I'm on fire right now. I ain't got time for this. I got time for this, hi Jack. I got time for this, man. Y'all want to see this? It's three minutes, man. This is what they're saying about Shola. Let's go. Every city has a name and often a story behind it. They go. Shola is no different, but it is a story unlike most. It involves two men and a card game played back in the 1870s. The card game was called 7-Up. Now, I don't play cards and I really don't understand it, but I understand who shows low wins the game. Cordon Cooley won, and this town got its name, Sholo. This story has gone around and around. Our town named the Main Street Deuce of Clubs because that's the lowest card in the deck. The town has seen a lot in the years since then, but it hasn't forgotten its past. In fact, a good bit of history can be found inside the Sholo Museum. Uh -huh. Early Sholo uh -huh. was nothing but a crossroads where the far early farmers and ranchers came in and they they either freighted to make money. Now, does this uh, young lady here, is this her place? She knows so much about it. The history, we're so proud of our history. A parasite moves in your body, invades it, takes it over, and then they pick up from whenever the invasion started in your body and they want to talk about their history. They dress up. Look like they ain't parasites and talk about their history, but your body's been your body. It has nothing to do with them. They invaded you. It's not a part of your body forever. What invasion is part of your body forever? <laughs> you need to va you know, <laughs> you need to get the tenderoni just to get this out of you. <laughs> just to avoid this virus, man. For real, for real, man. Or they uh, sold goods to Port Apache. The museum gives visitors a window into mm. the town when it was just getting started. You can see pictures and postcards from a simpler time. Even part of the old post office where people would go to send and pick up mail. After they closed down that post office and built a brand new one, of course, this stuff got kind of carried away. 
and the historical society found these actual post office boxes and this this actual counter in a barn the old items now make up one of the more popular rooms in the museum but the favorite is probably Managa, they talking they're picking up their history with a post office with a jail this is what they're proud of these people didn't build no city <laughs> they're picking it up in the 1800s as if she's giving a true this thing is called Arizona's town has rich history. They're going to pick up at 1800s as rich history, man. This is their history. What happened to the 1200s, 1300s, 1400s? Where's that history? With the old jail cell and booking room. Before this was built, officers would actually handcuff the bad guys to a tree, and an overnight stay was, well, not all that bad. They would also put them in motel rooms. The police have told me that they used to put the, the people that were arrested in motel rooms. And they, they found out that the guys were having a better night's rest than they were. And they decided something had to be done about that. So right here, they built a small jail cell. Visitors can see pictures of the lawmen that roam the street and the actual booking cards hi, of the hi, bad hi, guys. Hi, it's one of the favorite rooms around here. I have so many people that come in and they, they look at the old pictures of the old former police and they say, oh, I know that guy. I know he caught me doing this or that kind of thing. So it's kind of neat to have the uh, old police uh, department here or the booking room. The museum is also home to some pictures and items from one of the most frightening times in Cholo's history. Back in 2002, that Rodeo Chesky fire started Monaga, they're going back to 2002 for their rich history, man. Coming in on us, I remember going out and looking at the smoke above our trees, and uh, it was quite frightening. Luckily, the fire was stopped and the city was saved. These days, Sholo has become a vacation destination. The city on the mountain certainly has plenty to offer. So what are you waiting for? Come on up. Walk around and enjoy the crisp mountain air. Yeah? Mountain? You got some you got some levitation? Yeah? Is you is you high? Is you high? Is you you all high? You talking show low, shy low? Why is you so high? <laughs> Yeah, man. So, you know, there you go. That, that's the hijack telling you a few things. What you need to know is this, man. <laughs> Let's put this together for the dismount when it comes to Sholo and Shiloh. I started thinking about lakes, you know, uh, same type of lakes that all, all the drop is buried under, you know. You know, these type of reservoirs, these type of lakes, you know, foundation still <laughs> popping up because, you know, a lot of y'all said it, man. These, these things are kind of getting drained, right? They, they kind of drying up these man-made reservoirs and imagine the Naga City beneath it. Just imagine what's underneath. Imagine what they've done. Over and over and over again, it's like we got, right? Over. Oh, Mormon Island? What the Mormons got to do with this, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. All right. All right, my love, let's get it. Lakes. What's beneath these lakes in Sholo? You know, I just I had a an original thought, you know? No one's ever brought up lakes in Sholo before, but since we've been digging on lakes and Naga cities and that Shiloh was in my head bone up to the aqua, I'm, I just put in lakes, right? So here we go. Took me back to Sholo AZ. That's one of the links here. There's a place called Full Hollow Lake Recreation Area. I said, God dang, dog. Full Hollow Lake, huh? Who's the fool? Who is the fool? And who's hollow? A favorite area for residents and visitors alike, Full Hollow Lake Recreation. Okay. 
What are you going to tell me about it? Operated by Arizona State Parks. This recreation area was created, right? It's not natural. This lake was created by a private and public partnership in 1988. They've been doing this up to recent times, burying Naga history, burying Shiloh. Did they, Managa, did they bury a biblical city? Would they do that? Would they bury a Naga city? Would they bury a Negro city? Would they bury your priesthood? Would they bury Moshe? <laughs> Would they bury the biblical city? of Shiloh. I'm just talking Shiloh. Just talking Shiloh. Talking lakes in Shiloh. Created in 1988 between the city of Shiloh, U.S. Forest Service, Arizona, Game and Fish. Now, these guys play heavy in the cover-up. Arizona Game and Fish in the parks and the forest service. Everyone's working together. Everyone's in on it. Everyone's rocking. This lake area, man, they got 75 site camp, group camp areas. Man, they are popping off, man. Now, this is an 850 acre, like a thousand acre area, man. The lake itself is about 150 acres. You did 150 acres, man. Buried Naga history or biblical cities. I'm just talking Sholo. Sholo got a lake. Who's the fool? Arizona Game and Fish been bearing it up. Let's go. Let's look at some more park history i said whoa let's dig on this lake right okay okay let's dig on the full hollow lake uh, open and dedicated in 1994 you dig full hollow lake located in the world's largest con contiguous belt of ponderosa pine forest relatively flat balsatic basaltic Plateau broken by Show Low Creek and Full Hollow Wash. Characterizes the property. Full Hollow Lake was created by construction of a dam. So every link we get a little closer, right? <laughs> we like, all right. Uh, history of Show Low. They, you know, first, they, they didn't tell us nothing at first, right? We went to the official site. They're telling us about libraries and stuff. You know what I'm saying? They didn't tell us nothing on the official site. We, we go a little deeper. We say, oh, there's some 1200 history. There's a tribe that that just disappeared, right, for unknown reason. They're out of there. Coronado's looking for the cities of gold, right? We're looking at the gold rush situations. And then we've been digging on these lakes. Then we find out that there's these man-made lakes that were created in the 1980s and 90s. This one says 94. So it was created in 88, opened up in 94. It took that long to bury your history, bury your Naga cities, right? Or we're just talking Shiloh. Khan. All right, all right, all right. For the dismount. Let's go. <laughs> hey, tune in. Hey, tell the Naga in the back of the class. Tune in, my Naga. Shout out to you. We popping off. Okay. So this construction of a dam. At the confluence of Sholo Creek and Full Hollow Wash in 1957 by the same people, the Arizona Game and Fish Department, with federal assistance, of course. It's created a 149 surface area lake, right? 149 acre lake in the National Forest Land.
On June 4th, 1992, State Parks received a term special use permit from the Forest Service on 580 acres surrounding Full Hollow Lake. This permit was amended in 1992 to include additional 74 acres, making the total acres 654. They are giving away Nagaville 654 acres, my Nagaville. The lake is 150 acres of buried Naga history. Or are we just talking Shiloh, biblical cities, ancient cities, Shiloh, Sholo. Now you got lakes giving more evidence that things are buried because they weren't trying to give us no drop when we first started digging on. Sholo. They gave us libraries and stuff. You saw that <laughs> a great history here. They giving us what? Police stations. All right, post offices. We digging on real Naga history, man. We on the we on your ass. Hi, Jackson. Let me tell you something. We on your ass, man. Now we know. Now we know the code word, how to find our things. The reservoirs and lakes. Are burying Nagaville. Love to the Templar. I said, give a whole new meaning to this <laughs> Noah's flood and biblical floods. I, I mean, it's popping off. It's just, all right. All right. This is from deuceswildfestival.com. Fool's Hollow Lake Recreation. Imagine camping among a hundred foot pine trees. Yada, yada. 800 acres, they're saying this time. 150-acre lake, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The tiny town of Adair has long since been covered by the lake. Uh-oh. I don't care what they're calling it. All you need to know is that there's a town under how's it a tiny town if it's under a hundred and fifty acres of water? How can you tell us how dare you tell us tiny town as if we can confirm or deny how big the town is? It's under one hundred and fifty acres of water that you created in the eighties and nineties. Let's go back. Because Sholo's rich his heritage has created a thriving town that has prospered due to its many resources and attractions. Because they have many resources and attractions now. They're looking for the seven cities of gold. We just got that. Huh? I'm not, let me just... Let me just get that. Francisco Vasquez de Coronado? Left his footprints in the area searching for the seven cities of gold. Anaga, are we just talking show low? I can't, I can't make this up. You think I can make this? You think I could? You, this is, is this a stretch to you? <laughs> or are we talking buried Naga cities, sunken? Naga history, sunken Naga history, and perhaps sunken ancient biblical cities. Because you are ancient. You are the Bible, right? You, you are the tribe of Judah. You are the Udah. And all they did was take the Y off and change the D to a T. And you're confused now, right? I'm just talking you, though. I'm just talking you, though, where a reality simulation in Arizona has placed Samaria in you, though, where the map makers in the British Museum have played the Prester. I said the British Museum have placed the Prester in the same area. Who is Preston John? Look out for installment 71. 
Samaria, Utah, Shiloh, ancient city, right, in Samaria. Okay. Seven cities of gold, just talking Sholo. Hundreds and hundreds of acres. 150 acre lake. Rich heritage. Cities of gold. Rich heritage, many resources and attractions. Pioneered by Native Americans and Mormons. Remember the ones that settled, you know, that was supposed to be farming the land or something? Right. So now they just are all coming in, right? That's why I said enter the Mormons, right? Because you know their perspective that this is the promised land, right? <laughs> so you think it's just by chance they're just walking into the land of Preston John? Did the Mormons just tap dancing into India Superior for no reason? Settling land, settling the land in India Superior in Sholo Shiloh? Oh, today people all over the country are discovering the secret that the residents have always known. Which, what's that? What's that? What's that? What you gonna tell us? What you gonna tell us, boss? <sighs> Sholo is a great place to live. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Woo, I thought they were gonna let the cat out the bag. I thought they were gonna let the cat out the bag about Shiloh. But apparently their secret is it's a place... A great place to live, do business, work, enjoy wonderful recreational opportunities like the lake, like doing recreational stuff around ghost lakes where ghost towns of abandoned Naga cities are underwater. Oh, it's a lot of tourism here. It's full hollow lake. 800 acres of cool, recreational. Ooh, yeah. It's about a thousand acres, my knock. So the mounds, man, right? Oh, they're just playing cards in your city. They named it Sholo because of a card game. Sholo it is. If you can show low, you win. That's all they're going to give us. So, oh, Sholo history. Look at him. Oh, he's letting you know. That he show low, right? <laughs> he's showing way low, right? <laughs> Straight up in your face, ball. How low can you show? How low can you show? And what do the Native Americans and the Mormons have to do with this? Well, the Native Americans are the seeds of the Preston. The sons and daughters of King David, the sons and daughters of Moshe, Khalifa, Sheba. Shimbala is Sheba, and Shimbala is Sibola. Is Kalelu's promised land. Who knew about the promised land? The Moors, man. I mean, the Moor man. The Moors, man. You know, the Moor man. They knew Sholo was a great place to live and do some business. <laughs> work right <laughs> and enjoy all the things we got all our opportunities right the more knew exactly um where to uh come try to hijack the promised land estevan estevan zimori knew exactly where to come try to find us in hawaku and to lead uh coronado up here too I said, Esteban Zamor. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, we got more history as we went, right? Esteban. Oh, Esteban Eco. Coronado and the seven cities of gold. Okay, so... We just found out, Managa, that there is a a city, a town. 
how they put it. Is this the right one? Tiny town, they say, under 150 acres. Right? <laughs> but a tiny town of a deer has long since been covered. So they didn't give us no drop on this deer. They just brought it up. But it was Thomas James or Jefferson Adair who was responsible for the name Full Hollow. In 1980 or 1885, Adair moved into the area with the intention of farming. The locals joked that the, only a fool would try to farm this place. Why? Why? Because of where it really was. And it's interesting when you think about these floods and how these dams could just create this flood and you try to put in this biblical history and these floods and anything to do with some dams, you know? <laughs> I mean, damn, 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 man, you know? Certain dams have caused floods of biblical proportion. I mean, a lot of our stuff is underwater because of these damn dams. Now, looking more into this Adair, right now that we know that there's a whole city under this uh, Shiloh Lake, let's go. Let's, look, let's check out some more of this lake situation. Now that we know that this city is underneath this water, right? Okay. Cities underneath this water, right? Or a dare is one of them. A tiny town of a dare has long since been covered by the lake. Let's look into it. WMICentral.com. Okay. Talking about White Mountain. Okay. The ghost of a dare. Cemetery. She wants to claim it now, right? her people, her, her descendants, <laughs> the hijacks that came to Navajo country, right? <laughs> this is the place Brigham Young said when he and his pioneers looked out over the Great Salt Lake Valley in 1847. By contrast, in 1878, when Mormon pioneer Thomas Jefferson Adair looked over a hollow now in Sholo, he should have said there is no way that this is the place, but he didn't. And thus began the ill-fated settlement of a deer. So it was ill-fated because they moved in this place at that time. And then they later built a dam right in, 19, in 1957. That's when they popped off the dam. All right. Because that other thing, so they opened up in like 1990-something. So that was like another version of it or another development, you know what I mean? But these Mormons were pioneering this spot. Why? What's it got to do with the land of Preston John? What's it got to do with the cities of gold? What's it got to do with India Superior, Coronado, Estebanico? Okay. I mean, we're just putting some pieces together, an independent recon, doing independent recon, breaking news, right? Independent recon. <laughs> All right, breaking news. So Brigham Young, I mean, recon this cat, you know, he knew exactly what time it is. He's coming to the promised land, according to him and his teachings. And, you know, I mean, they, they know they're in the promised land. He's pioneering this place. And what does he say? This is the place what place brigham young i'm just talking sholo you talking sholo with me i'm talking shiloh with you but only if you talking sholo with a knock Navajo, Arizona. All right, so we're getting deeper. First, they talked about libraries, and they're talking about prisons and post offices. Then we got into the 1200s. They said it's a whole Negro town or a whole city <laughs> has been abandoned. Okay. 
All right. They talk in libraries. We look a little deeper. <laughs> oh, that's kind of interesting right here. Some petroglyphs, huh? Okay. Okay. Hidden petroglyphs in Sholo. So we can't just pick history up from the 1800s, but this is what they want to do. They built the full hollow lake. They say, oh, you use a fool. A tiny town gets buried underneath that place. But we're just talking <laughs> Shiloh. Tiny town, right? The tiny town of this ancient city, right? Buried under <laughs> 150 acres. And really 800 acres. Gotcha. Brigham Young says, this is the place, right? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm digging in Yandex. I'm, I'm still digging. I had to go to alternative search engine. But we'll get this for the dismount. So there's a city under uh, It's a city beneath this place. We got a Sholo Shiloh, you know, connection. We got gamer maps, you know, put in Samaria. You know, right where the Prester is, right where Udall is. Right? So, you know, okay. You know. Adair, abandoned in 1906. Who Who's over here fighting? That's right after the Chicamago situation, right? Adair is now at the bottom of Fool's Hollow Lake, two miles northwest of Sholo. Two miles from the current Sholo is a buried city under a lake called Fool Lake, right? Its empty structures fell into the inundation of the hollow in 1957 when the state of Arizona and Army Corps of Engineers built a dam. So they, they the, the military did this, right, to flood this city. It was a military operation. But now they're saying that there's uh, some ghosts called the Lady in Blue. Right, that's haunting these people. <laughs> yeah, man, there's a lot of death there. A lot of death. Who's death, man? Right, all oh, the Indians? Got you. Got you. Got you. The only remnant left of the settlement is the Adair Cemetery in Old Linden Road, the weather grave markers honor the deceased, some of whom lived only nine years, two years, and one day. The names of the, of the descendants now adorn streets in Sholo. There were 12 families in total who settled in the hollow in 1879. All Mormon pioneers tasked with settling the area. Tasked with settling the area. This is a military operation. That was their mission, these 12 families, to settle into Sholo. I can't make this shit up. Yeah. And they come, they got the sugar cane, the beans, they're doing all this stuff, right? They popping off. The treeless flat bottom of the hollow looked at first ideal for the crops, but the sellers could not have known at the time that its soil was laced with sand and salt deposits and the bowl shaped topography invited early frost daily to crops. The name Full Hollow seems now appropriate and was coined for that reason. Okay. Food, disease, and elements, and the elements weren't the only challenges. Someone named Geronimo. Okay, here come the Apache. Showed up on a black horse, but it's hungry and untrust. Why is he untrusting and hungry? I don't know, because maybe you took his things. Maybe you took their stuff. And you're, you're, you're scoffing at them now, calling them hungry and untrusting people? You're, you're, you're mad they're showing up hungry and you're mad they don't trust your ass? See how the invader talks, man. How, how could someone trust you? All this death and bloodshed, all this massacre, someone should trust you? All this genocide? 
Oh, you guys are a bunch of untrusting people. My goodness. <laughs> Hijack city, man. In fact, 1882, Adair inhabits inhabitants fled to a nearby fort for refuge against marauding bands of Apache. <laughs> so they came in trying to hijack in 1882. The, <laughs> the Nagas wasn't having it, man. All right. The fort later became the home site of Corden Cooley, who won a card game. And, okay, by showing a low card. Here we go. Cooley was neither Mormon nor an Adair settler, but in the spot where his home used to be now stands the downtown Sholo LDS church right where his home used to be and who they call coolies now put it together my man i mean come on this is a game this is a play this is a joke right who's the coolies come on man for the okay i gotta i gotta get out of here man for the dismount this is ridiculous hey you ever heard of a movie called coolie high Tribe of Judah. Yeah. Cooley High. Very uh, classic movie. We just talking about a bunch of Nagas, right? And they actually spelled it Cooley High. <laughs> C O L L E Y. Cooley. Derogatory. How do you spell derogatory? I can't spell derogatory. There we go. Thank you, man. Thank you, Hans. Appreciate you. Racial slur in the Americas. Oceania, African, you know, anything of color, right? I saw, man. I see. So <laughs> I'm out of here, man. It's ridiculous. This is ridiculous, man. <laughs> so this Cooley, neither Mormon nor an Adair settler. All right. Right where this Cooley was, <laughs> they built Shiloh, right? They they, they downtown Shiloh? Shiloh? They, they built the LDS church in downtown Shiloh, my All right. In the heart of Shiloh, they built the LDS church. You get the rest. You get it, man. I'm out of here. Can't do this no more. That's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous, man. Yes, Monogas, the reservoirs are drying up as consequences of the Western drought. Oh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. Yeah, man. Drain the lakes. Say it with me. Drain the lakes. Restore Nagaville. Them damn dams got to go. Restore Nagaville. Reservoir levels are dropping throughout the West as the drought tightens its grip on the region and intense summer heat further stresses both water supply and the surrounding landscape. Many reservoirs are at or approaching historic low levels due to lackluster rainy seasons combined with increasing temperatures due to climate change. Yeah, man. Okay. Lake Powell, which feeds off of Lake Mead. Lake Mead is drying up. Yeah, I would say it's all happening. Reservoirs in and around California are running dry. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, 37%, 44%. Trinity Lake, 46. Remember them at least, at least three... Cities buried in there. Shasta got a gang of cities. Orville. Oh, man. Ain't that connected with? Oh, man. Which one is the Orville drop? Which one is the Orville drop? Orville. All right. So the Shasta... Kennett is under that, all right, what they call Kennett, as well as Copper City, Elmore, 
Etter, Morley, Pitt, when all those cities are under this Shasta Dam, Shasta Lake situation, 1948. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's see if we can find that Oroville Drive. Gold Rush, Colorado, looking for the gold. That's one of the... Uh, more of the Mormon coming in. Seem to be this connection with these Mormons in this uh, dam situation, right? <laughs> this reservoir situation. Because they're all still looking for the gold. Although after the construction of the Hoover Dam in the 1880s and the rise of the Colorado River, residents had to leave the town in 1938 as a result of the lower water levels of Lake Mead. However, the ruins of St. Thomas, protected by the National Park Service as a historic site, are visible today. The town's original cemetery is now over to Nevada. That is built on top of cemeteries, on top of bodies on bodies. National Park Service historic sites now visible. The foundations are being shown as the stuff is drying up, man. Look at it, man. Imagine what's underneath the water. Utah. Imagine what's underneath the water in Utah. Grand Canyon. Washington. Everywhere. These damn dams. Oregon. Cities. They just built reservoirs over our cities. I know we saw Oroville on one of those slides as well, man. I mean, get the drop, man. I can't do that, you know. It's heavy on my heart bone, man, to imagine all the death and to see it like this, you know. The scripts say that we're going to end up weeping when we really figure this stuff out, man. Like, it's going to really hurt us, you know. We got to go through that phase of the pain of the ancestors, you know, the genocide, you know. But, yeah, the reservoirs. As uh, some of my noggins said in the comments, are drying up. The reservoir levels in the second year of this drought are what they were during the third and fourth year of the previous drought. And they're calling it droughts. You know, all this stuff is man-made, all these situations, man. So we don't know what's what, what to believe. But, you know, this professor at University of California, Davis, man, uh, is talking about that. Lake Shasta, all right, all right, all right. This is a 2021 only in 2019, it had 94% capacity. In 2021, it got 37. Damn, it dropped two-thirds, man. What's it going to be next year? <laughs> it's a wrap, man. <laughs> Managa, hey. Finney is, Chris, Finney is Chris crossing on the head bone 2024. Right? <laughs> we got the great American comedy 2024. Chris crossing, making the, the Chris cross. And you got these reservoirs drying up at the same damn time. Damn, damn, damn. We're just talking, uh, you know, Hoover dams. You know, all these damn dams. Yeah. Low water levels. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it does appear that reservoirs are drying up. All across the earth plain. What does it mean? Will we see Shiloh rising about that Shiloh Lake? Right, there's a couple of them. Is it Shiloh Lake? There's Full Hollow Lake. And then there's Shiloh Lake, Sholo Lake. <laughs> All right. Also located on the southern boundary of the city is Sholo Lake, operated by Recreation Resource Management under contract with the city of Sholo. Sholo Lake is located adjacent to Sholo Lake, road about one mile from Highway 260. It is 100 acre lake. So on the other one, you got 150 acres of towns underneath that. Now you got another 100 acre lake. Who needs 100 acres of lake? That sits on an elevation of 6,500 feet. <laughs> Come on, man. What's what's buried under this one? I guess the investigation. 
continues, man. Say it with me, my naughty. Hyboria. We just talking Samaria. Say it with me, my naughty. Shiloh. We just talking Samaria. Or we just talking Sholo. <laughs> Sholo, Arizona. Yeah, they didn't give us much, but I think we got a lot. And I think these petroglyphs, it's worth looking into <laughs> as we connect the real Naga past, the real Naga present, and the land of the Preston, India Superior. All praise to wow, that we can start seeing clearly that we got lakes, they got bodies on bodies, and it's all happening, man. Right in our baseball. But they're coming back. You know, it's just all happening, right? I mean, you know, we're coming back to life, man. The more mind got to, got to come up off of it, man. The LDS, they're going to have to come up off of this, man. You know, our things, our stuff, our tabernacle flow, and all the towns, that have long since been covered up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's all happening. Show low. <sighs> he sure is showing low. But we are showing. High. <laughs> High in you, though, man. I'm just talking you, though. I'm just talking show low. <laughs> Hey, hop to the real ones for surfing the wave. Keep doing more recon on the areas near you. You know, let us know what kind of lakes, what kind of reservoirs are drying up near you. You might want to pay attention to those things, look into those things, and see what you find in your own investigation. Stay up, suit up, shoes up. Hala, hawa. We popping off. We making naga moves. <laughs> Shallow off. To the real ones, man. Hey, Managa. I ain't know. Yeah, man. <laughs> got to. I got to do this for the hijack because uh, they think they over there, you know, making hijack moves. And here we are. And here we be. Making Naga moves, man. This is for the tribe. This is for Nagaville. Hey. <laughs> hey, this is for Joy World, my Naga. This is for Joy World, man. You know, please take the time. Please take a moment and do it for Joy World. Shalom.
turn up. I take the turn up. It's a frequency walk out. I knock at the turn up. Knock at the turn up. Frequently, frequently, frequency. Find your charge with the remedy. Penalty keeps with the leniency. Penalty pulls the seeds of the trinity. Like Neo and Matrix. The highs that be sour, they link and not limit me. You are my mini me. Cause you could not ever step up the big back. Plus, you inferior. You can't get near. And he is pure. Ain't that serious? I'm just curious. You from Syria. Y'all heads love talking about very on top areas. You put knocks on that fire. We spit fire. Play how you want. We make Naga move. Keep it cold. Now we vibe on bro. Now the tribe on cold. Now we lit. Cut our hijack off so don't get called. Oh, Naga, what? What you saying, bro? Who you praying to? Got your hijack. This is real Naga. We make Naga move. Keep it cold. Now we vibe on bro. Now the tribe on cold. Now we lit. Cut our hijack off so don't get called. Oh, air it out. We who the people been here about. We who the people been praying about. You think it's dead when it played out? We know the people to pray for. Serve out a family of criminals. Serve out a world of subliminals. Stay alive as long as I keep it cold. Revive the world of a rich and strong. Boston, Boston. Frequency war with its constant. Don't go to war with them bosses. I live no ripper on Slauson. Before that glitch on Apex. That's what I still have my mind there. That don't no become the prize there. So I become like the knockout. What you saying, bro? Got your hijack. This is real Now the move. Keep it cold. Now we vibe on gold. Now the trap on gold. Now we lit. Cut our hijack off so don't be comfortable. Now the what? What you saying, huh? Who you praying to? Got your hijack. This is real love. We make now the move. Keep it cold. Now we vibe on gold. Now the trap on gold. Now we lit. Cut our hijack off so don't be comfortable. Let's go. Let go. <laughs> Let go. Man, I do it for the tribe. Yeah, we do it for the tribe, man. It, it, it gets no realer than this, man. You know, this is a complete, true honor to do this, you know, with you. To raise money for Joy World, for Atlanta and a fence for land and the water, the well, the flow for the land, the shelter for the land, to shelter our people, to shelter the Nagas, you know what I mean? You know, ain't ain't too many people I can think of, you know, have uh, stepped into our community and, and dropped land on the Nagas, you know, and done it the right way, kept the cold, you know what I'm saying? And all praise to Wild for this vision, for this influence. You know what I mean? <laughs> to to show low, <laughs> to shy low, and to keep high, keep lofty, you know, to keep it on cool. You know, it's a big step. It's a big Naga move. Help us build our fence, my Naga, for joint world. You know what I mean? Shout out to my 500 cold keeping Nagas. Because with 500 cold keepers, 500 families in cold, not killing, not stealing, not coveting, not bearing false witness. No power for power. No adultery on a noggin. No, no, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, or honoring our father and our mother above. You know, always honoring, always giving honor to our ama. No vanity. Keeping our Shabbat. We win it every single time. How do you lose like that? That's what it means to keep the code. That's what it means to be a cold keeper. No idols. <laughs> hey, allow wash Shabbat Shalom. Help us about our fence, man. And, you know, get in what you can before the Shabbat for the Nagas. And we're making moves. We got boots on the ground, literally. You know what I'm saying? And it's all happening right now. We need you right now. We need to make sure we got more than enough. Um, and it's happening. You know what I'm saying? So this is the time. Like my Naga said, it is time. Um, if you've been waiting, if it's, you know, something you haven't done, you haven't got around to yet, please, my Naga and Ahop to all my repeat contributors, all the cons, man, contributing Ahop to you, you know, B 
Because of you, we're able to stay up. Because of you, we continue to choose up. And because of you, we will suit up and build our wall of protection for joint world. A hop to the real ones. Shalom.